last day of 2024. Uh, not that kind of Christian, Anthony Linford here. And, uh, well, I'm just tidying up a few last-minute things. In fact, I'm doing something really practical at the moment, because it needs doing. I am doing the washing up. I'd always been a pain about wanting to wash up when I was a kid. Probably never did, but, you know, it's a task it needs to be done. Well, here is something I am watching while I have been washing up. Yes, it's the dear old Reverend Brett Murphy, his last little fireside chat, shall we call them, of 2023. Naturally, as always, he's concerned about everybody going woke. Um, he thinks now that the Archbishop of Canterbury has been given the uh, MBE or whatever ser for services to the royal family, he's kind of really woked out. But he's having a bit of a go at us Methodists. Just been to my Methodist church this morning. Galston Methodist Great Yarmouth. And uh, he's having a bit of pop at us. Um, have a look at this. I think I, I think I owe it to him to have a let you see it uh, just as I finish tidying up here, okay? Now, UK Methodist, can you please answer as one, or as near to as one as possible, have we gone fully woke? Yep, Archbishop's had his uh, knighthood or whatever. I certainly think this is terrible what's happened to the Nigerian Christians, of course. But have we now gone fully woke? I'll let you just watch a minute or two just to get a flavour, OK? Oh, and I will warn you, rather than going straight for woke, he goes on a little bit, still talking about the uh, Church of England, because sadly they have agreed that they will, uh, well, sadly, according to him, they have agreed that they will uh, bless same-sex unions. But he does mention the rainbow activists. And, well, there's a bit of a rainbow activist myself. Um, just listen to him on rainbow activists. He has gone from that to a far more seemingly liberal stance. I don't know if that's Mr. Welby's personal belief or if he just sort of sees himself as this arbiter of the will of the majority of the church and the synod, which is kind of the picture he's painted. I'm, I'm a nobody, I have no opinion, I just go with the flow of the church. That's not the job of a bishop, let alone an archbishop. The job of a bishop and archbishop is to defend the faith, to uphold the apostolic positive faith against all false claims uh, and against all false gospels. And that, sadly to say, Mr. Welby has failed miserably at that. I think it's a bit of a mix of the Peter principle and a bit of a mix of lacking having the backbone to stand up to heretics and activists and rainbow activists who have been pressuring him and the, the C of E's hierarchy to change for years. And of course, their constant entryism has... So third, please comment below, sound off, let us know your opinions. I love to read the comments and I know our brothers and sisters uh, on this page, love to watch it as well. We all like to see what each other has to say and reflect and share our opinions. Uh, you will get no response from me if you tell me the king is a lizard person, though, because that's just loony. <laughs> okay, the third story for this week is that the Methodist Church in the United Kingdom has gone completely mad, and they have labelled titles such as husband and wife as offensive terms. Yes, that's right, dear viewer, it is offensive for the Methodist ministers and congregation members in the UK to use terms such as husband and wife. In new guidance issued to its clergy in the United Kingdom, the Methodist Church has advised the use of fully inclusive language. Fully inclusive language. There are some buzzwords that should make every Christian skin crawl, which involves avoiding the use of any gendered titles or pronouns as they may be considered offensive to people who don't hold them because, of course, people's snowflake feelings and delusions are more important than actual facts or biblical truth. 
The Inclusive Language Guidance also offers congregations a step-by-step -step guide for repenting of hurtful language towards groups that are marginalized and demonized by the culture. What groups are marginalized and demonized by the culture? This is clearly aimed at the LGBTIQ plus rainbow activist crowd. How are they marginalized anymore? They're not. They are celebrated relentlessly in our culture. You can barely walk down the street without seeing a rainbow flag on something. And if it comes to Pride Month, you're absolutely inundated with it. The obnoxious flag is everywhere you look. There, there are constant inclusive adverts on the telly. You can't watch a TV show or a movie these days without some woke sexuality garbage being peddled at you or your children. I mean, goodness gracious me. Seriously? Seriously, marginalized demonized? We need to go that far out of our way to include absolutely everyone that we divorce ourselves from the, the simple, humble truth of maleness and femaleness, of husbands and wives, of Mr. and Mrs. or Miss. But really? That's what the Methodists think is a, a, a compassionate Christian way to live? Just um, massaging people's egos, uh, indulging their delusions, and letting them continue on a path to hell in their sin rather than calling them to repent? That's the true loving thing to do. But apparently that's just bigoted and evil now. So, in conclusion, at the end of what in fact is 2023, I did say I would give you some information on the guidelines. Uh, they are called the Methodist Church Inclusive Language Guide. And one thing I want to quote is the little piece of scripture that's right under the uh, main headline. It says, for in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. And if you want to look it up, Galatians 3, verse 26, NRSV. Now, the purpose of the guide is really, and I'll sort of half quote and half summarize, as Christians, it says why we offer the guide. As Christians, we need to have the courage for conversations that can sometimes be difficult to recognize that we sometimes exclude people, to listen with humility, to repent of any hurtful language, and to take care of how we listen and what we say or write in the spirit of Christ. Good, open, encouraging conversations based on careful listening are central the, to positive relationships, including those within the church, using careful and positive language is key to the effective to effective mission and ministry now look there just in that first paragraph which is probably where he must have looked at whatever was quoted in some possibly right-wing newspaper to repent of any hurtful language he just didn't like that idea he didn't seemed to think that repenting had anything to do with anything. He didn't think, seem to think that hurtful language might include inappropriate gendering, inappropriate use of pronouns. They could be used to hurt, to harm, actively to cause damage to yeah but no yeah what does he say about that oh well you know you, you can't deny biology you can't deny biblical truth biblical truth what the heck would he have done about eunuchs in the bible i really do think he'd have had a bit of a problem with eunuchs wouldn't he yeah i'm, I'm not sure how he'd have dealt with that yeah so we need to ask him what the guidelines are surely about is saying, let's just be nice with each other. Let's consider the kinds of words that we use. And let's make these words that kind of make everybody feel welcome for who they are in the body of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Have a great 2024.